Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, another healthcare worker tests positive for COVID-19. We've got the latest. Liquor seized. Why customs officers raided a local bar. Plus, a deaf Bahamian gains social media fame. News is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to Our News and thank you for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Weeks after viral video showed customers purchasing alcohol from Made Men Liquor Store in violation of emergency orders, the liquor store on Faith Avenue is back in the spotlight. Customs officers confiscated truckloads of alcohol from the business today. Jillian Gray tells us why. A team of customs officers hauled boxes of liquor from the Maid Men Sports Bar on Faith Avenue today. This particular bar came under heavy fire last week after it was found they were selling liquor illegally. Earlier this month, businessman Jonathan Ash sprinted into court and appeared before a magistrate where he was charged with violating curfew and operating a non-essential business after a video circulated on social media showing him selling liquor. Well, Customs officers visited that store and this time they came to confiscate boxes of alcohol. Officers wearing face masks formed an assembly line and one by one they packed cases of Bud Light, Kalik, Guinness, Coors Light and Heineken onto a large cargo truck. When that was filled to the brim, they then rolled two heavy-duty Dodge Ram trucks up to the side of the building and packed it with more beer and cases of wine. Superintendent Tyrone Sands of Bahamas Customs told our news they were uncustomed goods. Uh, um, we also discovered that um, they were operating without a valid business license. Based on all of that, the, the controller advised uh, the team to confiscate uh, or seize the goods. And so that's what you all would have seen, the, the officers just seizing those goods until we made our initial investigation. Sands said the owners are alleging that they paid for the goods, however, no paperwork has been provided. He added that they are giving them an opportunity to provide proof of payment before the controller makes her final decision. I mean, we give you opportunity to, to, to prove. What is it? You say duty is paid, prove it. Show me your receipt. Duty could be paid whether it came directly from the United States, from a foreign port, or duty could be paid by it being bought locally, you know, in either event, show us, prove it. Okay. At that point, they were unable to do that. As it relates to other businesses that may have uncustomed items, Zan said a word to the wise is sufficient, and he hopes after business owners see officers in action, they will get their affairs in order. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jillian Gray. The Minister of Health confirming that one additional case of coronavirus has been confirmed among healthcare workers who were tested recently because they may have been exposed to the virus. Georgia Bain reports. Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands confirming that the results for over 50% of the expanded COVID-19 tests, which were carried out on healthcare professionals over the weekend, are in. And so far, one test is positive, bringing the count to 81. We now have more than 50%. Uh, and uh, I think there's one positive out of the, out of the lot. So far, 16 health care workers have tested positive for COVID-19. Sand said after appropriate counseling, health care workers are expected to return to work. Most of these persons would have been at the end of their 14-day exposure. So certainly we expect the majority of those persons to be appropriately counseled, determine how they're doing physically, psychologically, and then to return to the workforce. Minister of Health Dr. Dwayne Sands said that persons in quarantine may be subjected to being tracked. Now, whether that's through an app on their cell phone or a tracking bracelet, Sands says that these measures will be taken to ensure public safety. The app that we have chosen actually has the ability to create a boundary, a virtual boundary. And if you uh, go beyond that boundary, it sets off an alarm. If you travel to an area like a food store, a pharmacy, a bar, a restaurant, whatever, uh, that can be 
uh, pre-loaded uh, into the software so that we know where people are. Sand said there is even a plan in place for those who try to outsmart the system. We understand also that some people may decide, well, I'll just leave my phone at home and go out into the community. So there are other alternatives, looking at bracelets, which are uh, not uh, removable, so that for those people who have demonstrated that, look, for some reason that phone is stationary for hours on end and they're not napping um, there are other alternatives that we have to look at the health care minister said it's a matter of the innocent suffering for the guilty now clearly this is an intrusion into personal liberty and we are very cognizant of this we have issues of the innocent suffering for the guilty because the overwhelming majority of people abide by the rules Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie Obey. One week after the police force announced the promotions of four senior officers, the police force announced 68 new promotions today. 23 superintendents were promoted to chief superintendent, including press liaison officer Shandon Knowles, Marino Hines of the traffic division, and David Lockhart, who now heads the police training college. Meanwhile, 45 assistant superintendents were promoted to superintendent. That list includes Deborah Thompson, who was the lead investigator in the failed Shane Gibson trial. During that trial, Thompson testified that in hindsight, it was wrong to have a meeting with witnesses Jonathan Ash, Deborah Bastian, and their lawyers to clear up ambiguities in Ash and Bastian's statement. Well, Attorney General Carl Bethel continuing to make a case for the extension of the emergency orders. Bethel insisted the government's approach to fighting COVID-19 has to be a strong, focused, and sometimes unpopular one, as he insisted COVID-19 could be more dangerous than staring down the barrel of a gun. Jasmine Brown reports. We face a dangerous and unknown enemy that constantly changes, that has methods, um, it, it, it latches on, attacks areas that were inconceivable. It's inconceivable. The AG made the comments in the Senate on Monday evening where an extension of the emergency orders COVID-19 was debated and passed. An amendment extends the emergency order to May 30th and allows for an increase in penalties for quarantine violators. Those who break quarantine will be fined up to $20,000 or five years imprisonment or both. The AG insisted the government is only doing what it must to keep Bahamians safe. And that is all these lockdowns and orders are all geared to do, is to, to, to assist the Bahamian people in understanding the nature of the threat we face and the need for each of us to do the best we can individually to protect ourselves and to protect our children and our families and the elderly. Bethel says the amendments and extension are difficult for many, but necessary for all. As COVID-19 spreads across the globe, Bahamians began to feel the effects as tourism came to a halt. In the House of Assembly on Monday morning, the Prime Minister revealed his administration will implement a five-phase approach to restarting the economy. It's a feat the AG admits will not be easy. We do what we have to do because we're trying to save lives. The AG also commended the hard work of medics and law enforcement officers who are on the front lines in the fight against COVID-19. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, a mother of four who was evicted from her apartment is overwhelmed with gratitude after receiving hundreds of cash and grocery donations. Jared Higgs has her story. Daddy made me a ketchup. <laughs> the smiles on these children's faces are no coincidence. There are people with huge hearts out there. Huge. Last week, our news told you about Jetsina Nern, a mother of four kids who was given a letter evicting her from her apartment. The notice came less than a month after she was laid off from her job and in the middle of a global pandemic. Within minutes of the story airing, Nern and members of our news team were inundated with requests to assist the struggling mother. Phone was going off like crazy. Where are you? Where are you? Where can I find you? What is your banking information? What do you need? You know, it was it was a huge apartment support, not only in Nassau, but also the family islands as well. Overwhelmed and grateful mother says she met nearly 400 people who donated money and a hugely generous supply of groceries. It became so much that I started to put together and give out to mothers that I know who are in need as well. Nuren collected nearly $10,000 in cash donations and describes the outpouring of support as life-changing. She says the money she raised allowed her to find a new and bigger apartment almost immediately. The one that we were in were like, was a one-bedroom. 
but now the one that we're in now is a two bedroom so, and it has a, a front room area and everything it's 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 like almost a twice of si the size of what we were in before. So the kids have more space to move around and Renaya has more space to move around. Renaya is Nern's 10 year old daughter. She is confined to a wheelchair after being shot in the head as an infant. The 37 year old mother says her daughter may be disabled, but she believes her sixth sense is telling her that things are better. She knows that we're in a different place. So she, she can't stop smiling and grinning and laughing and they just having a, they just happy. On Monday, the Prime Minister announced a rental assistance plan that postponed 40% of rent payments and prohibits landlords from evicting tenants who were in good standing prior to the pandemic. Nairn says the plan is needed, but not only to help mothers. She says many struggling dads are too proud to come forward and ask for help. So if you know a, a, a father or somebody that you haven't seen in a while with kids, I would ask you to call them and see how they're doing and, and render some type of assistance to them as well. The relieved mother says now she's motivated to try and buy her own home. Her next step is to get her kids focused back on school, especially her seven-year-old son, who's autistic. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. All right, thanks, Jared. Well, Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist defending recent comments made on a local radio show. He insisted his comments were cut up and taken out of context. Jared Bain has more. The unintended consequences mm -hmm. is that people spent all their money on food and then found that they couldn't pay the rent. They couldn't pay the mortgage because it's all tied up in the, in the cupboard. That clip was taken from the 1 minute and 27 second video of Turnquest appearing on Steve McKinney's hard copy, which has since gone viral. Addressing the matter Tuesday morning, Turnquest said it is unfortunate that a person would cut up his statement to twist it into something that it wasn't. The host and I were having a conversation about uh, long lines and persons uh, gathering at the food stores and hoarding supplies. And the basic comment that I was making was that persons do not have any need to hoard or to stand in long lines because as the Prime Minister has indicated, there is adequate supplies for everybody. And so, yeah, it just pers basic personal uh, financial advice. Turquoise said the conversation was solely aimed at providing sound financial advice to budget and remain within your spending limit with no intention of criticizing anyone. It's very um, uh, unfortunate. Uh, very, uh, 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 some sick mind would, would, would seek to do something like that. But it unfortunately is uh, um, where we are today uh, with, with uh, persons who uh, just want to try and, and, and make political points. But again, there was no disrespect and there's no, certainly no intent uh, to uh, um, attempt uh, to tell people how to spend their money or uh, to uh, um, criticize anybody. Just. Uh, good, sound, personal financial advice. Turnquest said he feels that there's no need to apologize for his statements and he trusts that once the entire clip is heard, people will see that he meant no ill will. Which is a silly thing. I never said such a thing. It, it, is, it, is, it is so unfortunate. I never said that. Uh, and again, uh, uh, hopefully the, the host has agreed that he will address that issue this evening on his show. Uh, and then uh, hopefully the, the full uh, clip uh, and the discussion will come out and people will understand the context in which we were talking, we were having the conversation. Reporting for our news, I'm Giorgio Bain. All right, thanks, Giorgio. Still to come, a closer look at contact tracing. Stay tuned. The Ministry of Education presents the Bahamas Learning Channel on Rev TV channel 295 starting Wednesday, April 15th, where students across the entire Bahamas will have access to virtual learning for BJC and BGCSE taught daily by our teachers. Tune into the Bahamas Learning Channel where education is in the click and stay tuned for the Bahamas Learning Channel 296 launching soon. Now that COVID-19 testing is being expanded, the Ministry of Health surveillance team will be able to track and trace more cases than those at a risk for exposure. Jerome Sawyer takes a look at crucial functions performed by the contact tracing team. He was positive from... Every day, this team of doctors and nurses has to ensure they know the whereabouts and conditions of hundreds of people exposed in some way or the other to COVID-19. 
The moment there is a confirmed case, contact tracing begins. Nurse Ernestine Flowers heads the team making those calls. Your name has been given to us as a contact of someone who has tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. We then inform them that they will be monitored for a period of time. And during the time of monitoring, which is 14 days, we will assess them on a daily basis. If we're able to, at times they are assessed both morning and evening. Each positive case generates a separate list of names who must be found, notified, and told what to do next. The next 14 days are crucial. Any change in health status or deterioration is recorded and immediately passed along. At this point, compliance is crucial. And then it also becomes difficult when persons um, are not really willing to, to comply. And at that point, we are able to say to them that, you know, the Ministry of Health has the authority, backed by the Health Services Act, which gives the Ministry of Health and the minister, the um, medical director, to carry out activities that they deem necessary in the best interest of the public's health. But remember, not every contact means an infection. It's important to reassure them that a quarantine measure is precautionary should the exposure eventually result in a positive case. That is why contact tracing is, is so important. Not all persons who are in the immediate environment with that person becomes positive. As an added precaution, each quarantined individual is to be given a final medical assessment at the end of the 14-day period just for medical clearance. Reporting for our news, I'm Jerome Sawyer. Aviation Minister Dionisio de Aguilar is addressing concerns of rogue flights between the family islands. He warned that any pilot caught flying illegally will have their license revoked. Berthony McDermott reports. Amid concerns over pilots flying to the various family islands despite emergency orders, Aviation Minister Dionisio de Aguilar is assuring the public that there is a strict protocol in place before permission is granted. Nobody knows why those flights are moving, but I want to assure the Bahamian public that there is a rigid protocol in place and permission needs to be sought before a flight is, 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 uh, happens. The Aguilar admitted there may be rogue pilots making domestic flights. He had this stern warning. But I warn them, if they get caught, that's it. They'll lose their license and they won't be able to fly in this country. We, we encourage people to let us know. Send pictures, let us know. Get the tail number of the plane. Let us know because we can, we, can, we, we, we can check to see whether that, that plane has permission. But to say that I see a plane coming in doesn't help us. Take a picture of the tail number of the plane, send it to us, and, and we'll certainly check it out. The IUL explained that all flights, including critical services, are approved by the Director General of the Civil Aviation Authority. So he approves critical services, BPL, water and sewage, national insurance, the banks. Um, um, uh, all of these entities move people throughout the Bahamas to keep the country running. And then there will be emergencies, there'll be health emergencies, there'll be people dying and they want to move their bodies. There'll be, you know, we have to look at all the conditions. There's a lot of mitigating circumstances that, that the Director General of the Bahamas Civil Aviation Authority uses and assesses before he grants permission. Last month, under the emergency powers order, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis announced that all airports and seaports are to be closed to all non-essential domestic travel. However, cargo vessels were still allowed to travel to family islands without passengers. Reporting for Our News, I'm Bertha McDermott. Our thanks, Bertha. Still to come, food voucher distribution begins for students. Stay tuned. The Ministry of Education presents the Bahamas Learning Channel on Rev TV channel 295 starting Wednesday, April 15th, where students across the entire Bahamas will have access to virtual learning for BJC and BGCSE taught daily by our teachers. Tune into the Bahamas Learning Channel where education is in the click and stay tuned for the Bahamas Learning Channel 296 launching soon. There were no long lines and hardly awaited various distribution centers for meal vouchers for students on the lunch program. 
Saritha Clark, who is the undersecretary in the Ministry of Education, was at C.I. Gibson Distribution Center and said by mid-morning they had already served about 125 people. We have seen an increase in the number of persons who have come first part of the morning in the last section that we had, the second round for the first set of vouchers. We distributed from the school and from the ministry. The ministry was the second round and we did not have as many persons during the second round. About 4,000 students benefit from the school lunch program. The vouchers received today are valued at $50, which covers two, two weeks of meals. Cherise Fernando collected vouchers for her two children and her godchildren. She and a mother of three said the vouchers are a much needed help. Vouchers, they did good for me. That was wonderful, and that got so fast and no line. And we really appreciate what Mr. Lloyd do for us as a parent, and we really appreciate what they give us. That's a token, but we know everybody needs little thing. Still to come, how a deaf woman gained social media fame. Stay tuned. The Ministry of Education presents the Bahamas Learning Channel on Rev TV channel 295 starting Wednesday, April 15th, where students across the entire Bahamas will have access to virtual learning for BJC and BGCSE taught daily by our teachers. Tune into the Bahamas Learning Channel where education is in the click and stay tuned for the Bahamas Learning Channel 296 launching soon. our news welcome back a young hearing impaired Bahamian woman has gained instant fame on social media creating viral videos on a popular new app that has helped many around the world understand people just like her a, B, C, D, e, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, L, P. on TikTok, she's known as boss lady kai but to her family and those who know her best she's just kylie a 28 year old young woman who hasn't let the challenge of being deaf stop her from helping teach others sign language. I was bored. I decided to, to use sign language on TikTok to help people to learn. People started to follow me. It was like, wow. And Kylie's following from the beginning of the emergency measures in March has grown to over 1 million followers and the views for each video in the tens of millions. My colleagues started reaching out to me. They say, Caitlin, you, I follow your daughter, you know, on TikTok. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Didn't take it, you know, didn't think anything of it. So I just started, I'm like, let me, I pull up the TikTok and I said, oh, wow. And then people are like, girl, this, she should be. The, did the media reach out to her and all that? Yeah, and I'm like, oh no, you know, I'm not a media person. We're not, <laughs> we're not television people. At 28 years old, Kylie works as an aide at a local private school. She's the first of three children and her mom, Gladys Capron says Kylie has always had a passion for helping people understand the plight of the deaf community. Kylie was born deaf, I believe. I didn't notice until she was like about seven months of age when she stopped babbling, you know, making the baby noises. And then I had her to uh, ENT specialist, and when they did her testing, um, her hearing was really bad. So, and I had her to Miami Children's Hospital, and they confirmed. And at the age of one, I, I was, it was confirmed that she was deaf, and she's been wearing hearing aid ever since. But that hasn't stopped Kylie from making waves of her own. And as her social media stardom grows, Kylie says for her, it's about helping people around the world be able to understand and communicate with the hearing impaired in their community.
Thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Remember, you can catch our news on the go with the RevGo Play app. Have a good Tuesday evening, Bahamas.